bird flight is when a bird flees either on the wing using actual flight or on foot, swimming or diving away. Some birds even climb away. This is still considered flight. Flight is an anti-predator response and has substantial consequences for the behavioural and other ecology of birds. Human beings are a type of stimulus in the environment that many animals like birds respond to as if we were predators and therefore understanding this important process potentially allows us to better manage and conserve much of Australia's avifauna. This video will guide you through the basics on how to collect flight initiation distance information. It's designed for people who are associated with an academic program, possibly through a university or possibly through a land management, management project or community group project. And the basic idea is to show you how to collect this information. It is not the purpose of this video to show you how to analyse this information because that can be quite complicated statistically. Instead, this video is about field techniques and procedures. Before you commence collecting uh, information on flight initiation distances, it's very important that you ensure that you have all the equipment that you'll need and you know exactly what data collection is required. Make sure that you have your devices, probably a rangefinder, to measure the distances between the markers which you will place and where the bird is initially located. You will need a GPS of some description. This is very important to locate the position of each flight initiation distance because some of the variables we may assign each of the approaches and responses may actually be derived from remote sensing where we overlay specific points on to uh, uh, images, etc., to determine the degree of fragmentation, the distance from water, etc. Make sure that you have adequate paper and data sheets, that you've read the instructions uh, associated with those data sheets, and that you have enough um, pens and pencils and clipboards to adequately store that data so that it can be entered at a later date. Being organised is easy to underestimate, um, easy to forget, but is actually essential to the appropriate conduct of any field work, including flight initiation distances. Before commencing a flight initiation distance, you need to check whether a particular bird in a particular location meets all the appropriate criteria. The first set of those criteria relate to the safety of you and to the birds. Make sure there are not predators or other disturbances such as dogs in the near vicinity. Make sure yourself and the bird, if it responds in particular direction or way, won't be endangered or threatened by busy roads or obstacles, etc. The second set of criteria that we must meet are those dictated by the experimental design of the study you're involved in, and they will vary from study to study. However, commonly, they will involve selecting a focal individual bird, generally not repeat sampling birds at uh, short intervals. They will involve situations where the bird is essentially responding to you as the experimenter rather than any other stimuli such as birds of prey, or dogs, or boats, or cars, etc. And typically, we want a very neat, clean, clear indication of the bird's change in behaviour. So we want a clear field of view, and we want to be able to adequately monitor the bird as we, as we approach. Once you're satisfied that all these criteria are in place, it's time, without too much delay, to get on with your flight initiation distance data collection. Before you collect any flight initiation distances, there's a number of things that you have to make sure you have already done. 
The first of these is to make sure that you have permission in order to conduct the experiments that you're about to undertake. This will require animal ethics authorisation and a permit from the Department of Environment and Primary Industries, which is required whenever you are doing any sort of research on wildlife. If you are conducting your flight initiation distance experiments on public land, you will also generally need a permit under the National Parks and Wildlife Service Act. If you're working on non-national park or non-reserve land, you will generally require written permission of the landowner in order to conduct these experiments. Permissions will vary from state to state and country to country. So you're advised to check with your local authorities about what permissions are required before you commence work. When conducting flight initiation distance work, the welfare of the animals involved is of paramount importance. You need to think about what the potential response of the animals might be to your standardised approach and think about whether that will put them in harm's way or not. Consider if the animals that you are approaching will be flushed or, or fly into or across roadways or near power lines or fences and adjust your angle of direction or choose not to conduct a particular experiment if you have concerns about how that response might actually potentially put some animals in harm's way. This is unusual, but it is something to consider when conducting these experiments. A number of studies have actually shown that the colour uh, of human clothing actually influences the response of birds to those humans. This generally means that when you are collecting flight initiation distance, you are going to have to use some kind of standardised clothing that is going to have to be suitable for a variety of weather conditions, an environment, a variety of environmental conditions, and be practical particularly where you've got multiple observers collecting information for you. Insistence on standardised clothing is likely to contribute to the robust nature of your data and is something you need to consider before you collect flight initiation distance information. The basic flight initiation distance approach involves a direct steady walk towards a focal bird. We may start our approach here and we move at a standard pace out towards the bird here. When our bird becomes alert we drop a marker and when it flees we drop another marker. We then move to the original starting location where the bird was originally situated and we are able to measure a series of distances which are of interest. The first of those distances is the flight initiation distance. The second distance which we may be able to measure in terms of the bird's response is called alert distance, the distance at which the bird ceased its activities and started to monitor you as you approached. And we always record another distance which is called starting distance, the distance at which the approach towards the bird commenced. You'll always be able to measure starting distance and flight initiation distance, but sometimes alert distance is pretty vague, and too difficult to measure. If we're unsure of alert distance, we indicate that in the data sheet and we do not record that distance. Variations on the standard direct approach occur when our focal bird occurs in water or we're unable to make a completely direct approach because of obstacles which prevent us from doing this, such as waterways, fences, uh, roadways, etc. 
in these circumstances, the data sheet which you'll be using will actually indicate some fields which tell you how far, which allow you to indicate how far into the water the bird was and what its response was. But when a bird is in the water, you do have the possibility that there will be no flight initiation distance, that you won't evoke a response by the time you reach the edge of the water and can no longer approach more closely. Tangential approaches, those from an angle, involve those situations where the angle of approach is not direct. In this case, we measure the distance between the observer and the bird when it takes flight, but we also take additional measurements during the approach, as indicated on the data sheet, to allow us to calculate the actual flight initiation distance uh, from the point where the response occurred. Similar to tangential approaches is the circumstance where we have a bird in a tree at some height. The data sheet also requires several distances to be measured to allow the calculation of the actual flight initiation distance adjusting for the height at which the bird was initially positioned. Again, for birds very high in trees, there is a possibility that your approach may not elicit a response. Where we have this circumstance, we always record this in our data sheets as well, because it tells us something about the probability of an escape response at a particular height for a given species, so it remains important information. The basic pattern, once again, is to record starting distance, alert distance if possible, and flight initiation distance. Additional data is often required where a bird is approached tangentially, in water, or occurs at some height up a tree. Remember to read the instructions that come with your data sheets carefully. Collecting the correct data, the correct distances, putting them in the correct fields is essential to a useful data point on flight initiation distances. There are many variations on the basic patterns that we have described so far in this video. When collecting flight initiation distances, one can collect them using a variety of stimuli apart from a single human walker. Multiple walkers, bicycles, multiple bicycles, cars, boats, buses, etc. all represent stimuli that birds will respond to and stimuli that may have management significance and uh, actually guide a particular study in relation to its research questions. Even in the simple case where you've got a single individual human being approaching birds, there has been studies using jogging as opposed to walking and shown that in fact this does make a difference onto the flight initiation distance of birds. Some studies, for example, might be interested in looking at flocks of mixed species of birds and therefore rather than finding an individual or a group of same species foraging or co-occurring in a particular area, they may actually be interested in finding mixed flocks, which may also involve some fairly uh, complicated uh, analysis of the species makeup of the flocks before the flight initiation distance approach is conducted. 
all of these variants are possible. All of these variants will employ to some extent modifications of the basic procedures that we have shown you in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate the bird and I guess as soon as we find the bird that's going to be our starting distance. So we're going to drop the first marker and um, that's going to be our starting distance um, and then we'll um, I guess straight away we can use the rangefinder to determine what the starting distance is and then we're going to slowly approach the bird at usually it's like one meter per second so quite just a standard slow approach um, and there's two things we can record alert distance and flight initiation distance alert distance is a bit difficult to um, measure determine because it's kind of hard to know exactly when the bird has become alert to your approach. Um, so actually Haley had quite a few markers. She'd drop a marker when she thought it was alert but if she realised that she wasn't, it wasn't actually alert then she'd drop another one and another one until she was certain of that. So we'll drop that and then we'll continue walking until the, the bird initiates a flight response. Either walks away or flies away, whatever. Um, and then we drop another marker and then we go to where that bird escaped and then we can go stand there and go back to, and measure the distances um, to the different markers. Um, that's basically it. We just try it. Do you have any concerns in regard to the data collection protocols or in relation to the welfare of the animals involved in the experiments? It is your obligation to talk to the project supervisor immediately about these. At the end of the day, we want to use as few animals as possible to get as strong a scientific result as we can possibly manage, hopefully for the betterment of the management of disturbance to animals like birds. Good luck with your flight initiation distance data collection. It's great to have you involved and if you have any suggestions or recommendations about how we can improve methods, please let us know. Thank you.